ट्रेंड्स एंड पैटर्न इन द ट्रिपल बर्डन ऑफ माल न्यूट्रिशन इन इंडिया This is the reading by J V Minakshi, ma'am, and we have discussed quite a few things in this. We have discussed uh, the trends in undernutrition. We have discussed trends in overnutrition. We have discussed changes in diet quality. Now she is going further, and she is saying that whatever you have estimated, that's fine. But there are some problems in the measurement of uh, uh, measurement of the energy intakes. while diet quality while discussing diet quality we have been discussing uh, the energy intakes uh, and she says this that there are there are problems in measuring these energy intakes what are the problems the problem is that as far as nsso data is concerned this nsso data is not accounting properly the energy intakes for the food items which are taken outside home it is telling one thing for sure that there are more and more there, there is an increasing tendency of people having food outside home but it is not measuring properly the energy intakes from that so if more and more people are taking food outside home and nsso data is not measuring the energy intake from that then there is bound to be the underestimation of the energy intake one second thing is that as far as underestimation of the energy intakes is concerned this is going to be more in case of the richer class because there is high probability of richer class going outside home there is high probability of richer class spending on the food uh, going outside home so their energy intake is being underestimated their energy intake is being underestimated so this is one problem huh? the another problem in the measurement issues are that earlier nsso used to use a 30 day recall period so it goes to people and it asks that uh, okay let us tell about the different food items you had in the last 30 day period right and then um, nsso nsso had the pilot survey in which it had both 30 day and the 7 day recall period so they also was okay now you tell in 7 days what you what you had you recall what you had in 30 days right the the golden estimate is the golden standard is 24 hour recall period so our our memories are are very short i mean it is very difficult for us to think about what you what you had uh, in the last 30 days or in 7 days as compared to 24 hours but in the pilot survey you had both 7 day and 30 day recall period and what they found was that when the recall period was shortened when the recall period was shortened then there is a movement away from cereals to non cereals right so short term recall period it mattered more for uh, non cereals as compared to cereals so what is this showing this showing this is showing that there is more and more tendency of people to have non cereals right and if you are not capturing non cereals properly then the energy intakes the estimation of the energy intakes is going to be underestimated right if you are not capturing if you are not measuring the energy intakes from non cereals properly then you will be underestimating the energy intakes and then they had uh, the another problem also which came up was that there is the reduction in the num number of food items canvassed so if you are reducing the number of food items then definitely uh, this is going to be uh, your your energy intakes are going to be grossly underestimated right uh, so in in the survey the number of food items which you are asking that food items have reduced in the survey you are asking about them whether you had this whether you had this whether you had this so if you are reducing the number of food items then people also are not able to recall properly so this will also result in the underestimation of the energy intakes then she talks about that okay you said this that there are measurement errors you said this that you are not taking into account fats and uh, uh, sugars properly 
But if you look at the average calorie intakes from fats and sugars, that doesn't seem to be very high relative to the requirements, right? And she says this, that there is National Nutrition Monitoring Bureau, which is also using uh, the accurate dietary assessment methods to compute the food intakes. And it says this, it, it's uh, the, the survey by National Nutrition Monitoring Bureau shows that Yes, there has been increase in the consumption of fats. There has been the increase in the consumption of sugar over time in the rural India also. But although the consumption of sugar and fats have increased in rural India also, but the, the requirement, the recommended levels are still higher. Means if you need X, then you are consuming just X by two, right? The point is that, yes, they are increasing, but they have still not matched the recommended levels. One, that is the point. Second, in those states which have seen, uh, uh, which, which, have, which have actually increased uh, uh, or, or which have seen the high proportion of obesity, right, or high uh, trend in obesity, they are also those states which have very high average fat intakes. So she gives an example of rural Tamil Nadu. All India average is 28% for the fat intakes. And uh, in rural Tamil Nadu, it increased by 60%. Right. Then she brings up a very important point. She says, as far as the consumption of calories is concerned and consumption of fat is concerned. Here also you see inequality. Rich people consume, of course, more calories. They also consume more fat. But they consume much more fat than what they consume more calorie. Right. So there are, there are rich states, there are poor states. So in, in rich states, the average consumption of fats is more than the average consumption of poor states. Naturally, their calorie intake is also higher as compared to the poor states, right? But the consumption of fat intakes is also higher, right? So she has talked about the higher income groups. They are consuming 70% more fats than the average. Then the average higher income groups, they are consuming 70% more fat than the average and consuming only one by three more than the average as far as calories are concerned, one thing. So there are consumption inequalities in fats and oils, one. And then um, she also says this, that there is an another uh, explanation for the increase in the obesity level that, that could be uh, and uh, because of the decrease in the physical activity, both in the urban and the rural areas, but there is not much evidence for this. That is the point, right? So this is what I wanted to do in this particular recording. In the next recording, we'll start with the relative prices. Huh? How the relative prices have changed. Okay, in, in this particular reading only. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you, Vita.